Hey guys, hope everyone out there is having a great day or a great evening, depending on what part of the world you are watching from. I just thought that I would uh, share a few things that are going on in uh, our lives right now. And just, this is kind of a, more of a rambling type video. There's not really a particular lesson I'm trying to teach about the Philippines or anything else. Uh, but the first thing I thought I would share with you is uh, it's related to the Philippines because I've noticed over the past couple of weeks uh, I've really missed the Philippines. And some of you may wonder or may be wanting to ask what's it like being in the United States now for over three years uh, after living in the Philippines for so long. Remember I was there for 11 years. Um, and overall it's okay. I mean my I miss the Philippines and when I watch some of the other Philippines uh, YouTubers sometimes, it kind of makes me wish that I was back there. But at the same time, I can't say that I am miserable here in El Paso. I mean, so far, uh, my wife and I are learning to adjust to life here, and it's okay. And for right now, moving back to the Philippines, it's not... Uh, practical on many levels. My online business and this channel do not make nearly enough for me to live on. And another thing is I just I feel like God has put us here. I feel like this is a an assignment for us. This church we're, we're uh, serving here, we are enjoying it. And I feel like right now this is the place for us. Uh, I was thinking actually earlier this morning about would I move back to the Philippines uh, 10 years from now or when I'm ready to retire. Maybe that is always something that we have kind of in the back of our minds that we may want to do someday. But for now, I'm, I mean, I'm content. And another thing that I have to think about is the fact that when you live somewhere, and I've talked about this before in other videos, you eventually adapt to that place. It becomes a part of you. And as of right now, my wife and I have kind of adapted to living in the USA. It doesn't mean we couldn't readapt to living in the Philippines, but we're, you know, we're happy here. Uh, speaking of which, that brings us to uh, another point. There are a few things I wanted to share with you. Uh, my wife, Mary Chris, is close to becoming a U.S. citizen now. Uh, I won't go into all the details of the citizenship process, but uh, I will say that right after my wife got her 10-year visa here, which is more of a, a permanent resident type visa, we immediately applied for citizenship because once you are in the country for three years, you can apply. And we... We applied and we got the we got the invitation for her interview. Actually, when we were moving here to El Paso, the inter the letter came I think in the middle of October while we were moving. So obviously, we could not go to that interview. It would have been in Atlanta, and I did all the paperwork, sent them a change of address and everything, and we just had not really heard much from the government since I sent all the paperwork and we we figured it would be okay but you just never know with with the federal government exactly what they're gonna do and I was a little bit concerned that they would may just tell us we have to start all over which we could have done my wife would have not been in any danger of being deported because again she has her tenure visa but if they had done that, then we would have been out about $700 because when you get into these spousal visa and then the 10 year visa and then the citizenship, basically as of right now, each step is going to cost you about, it's over $600. So anyway, they have sent a letter to us and her interview has been scheduled for next month. We do not know yet if the interview and oath taking will be on the same day, probably not. But we are looking forward to that, and we're looking forward to it being the end of that process because it's been it's a process it's a process that started back in 2012 when I first applied for her spousal visa, 
and for her now to become a U.S. citizen, finally, it's it's a bit of a burden off of our uh, shoulders, so to speak. And in case any of you are wondering, she may apply for dual citizenship. She may get do what's necessary to also become a Philippine citizen again, have dual citizenship. But that's not really a priority for us right now. Uh, last, but definitely not least, I'm really thinking about learning Spanish. Because here in El Paso, it's probably... I would say at least 60, 70 percent of the general population is Hispanic and you hear it everywhere and you do encounter situations where if you are, if you only speak English, it can be difficult. Uh, so it's happened to me once or twice since I've moved here that I have wanted to communicate with someone and because I don't speak Spanish, that was very difficult. So. I'm thinking about learning. I'm not sure exactly how I will go about it, but I'm pretty sure that if I, I really applied myself for about uh, six months, I could probably do pretty well because I looked at a language chart in Tagalog. Filipino is actually what's considered a level two difficulty language, whereas Spanish is only a level one difficulty language. So I started looking at that and thinking if if I learn Tagalog in eight months, then I could probably learn Spanish in less time if I really applied myself to it. And one of the guys that kind of inspired me, I guess, to really start thinking about this is uh, Bud Brown. I'm sure some of you follow him. He's a, a, a retired guy that lives in, uh, I believe he lives in uh, Dumaguete. And I've kind of enjoyed watching some of his videos. And right now he's messing around with uh, learning uh, Mandarin, I believe, and other things. And he's inspired me because part of what my hesitance about with learning Spanish was kind of, do I really want to try to learn another language right now? Do, or do I have another one in me? And to see that guy who is, uh, shall we say, he's retired, so he's up in years, and to see him constantly challenging himself it kind of made me think about the, the same thing. So I'm thinking about doing that. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to go about it. I did study Spanish, by the way, a little bit in high school and college. So I'm not completely clueless about it. But I'm definitely not fluent. Now, one of the programs that I would really love to have is called uh, Fluens, F-L-U-E-N-Z, I think is how you, how you spell that. It's fluent Spanish Latin America. I would love to have that whole series, but it's like, um, I don't know, it's close to $400. And right now I don't have $400 just to, you know, throw at something. So, uh, but we'll see. Maybe one of these days I will uh, uh, be able to buy that program because I would prefer to just do it that way and learn at my own pace versus maybe taking a class or something like that. But who knows? I may take a class at a local community college. Who knows? Anyway, that's kind of what's going on with us. And if you don't hear me from me again soon, I'll try to do some video updates with my wife's citizenship next month. Uh, one more thing that I will mention, uh, for those of you who are uh, believers or just interested in learning more about the Bible or interested in, interested in hearing messages from the Bible, the uh, I'll put a link below, but we've started putting some of my messages online now, and I'll link to that below. So any of you who want to uh, hear some of my sermons, or you're just curious about it, you can uh, click that link below. So I guess that's it for today. Uh, I'll talk to you next time.